Uh, thanks everyone for joining. I'm very um, excited to have Dr. Sinrich Thoma uh, from uh, the University of Michigan with us uh, today. Um, we've had our first performances of, of RUR uh, this uh, previous weekend, and this weekend they're continuing to starting uh, tonight, thir uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday performances. Um, and uh, last week we heard from Dr. Heather Love um, provided some some, uh, some context for the play, um, and Dr. Toma is going to uh, really provide some uh, unique uh, material on the background of Karl Chopek, the the writer, um, and his milieu and, and, and sort of the, the, the uh, foundations for uh, for this uh, this amazing play. Um, very very glad to have you with us, Dr. Toma, um, and I think I'll, I'll uh, let you. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, as you can perhaps see, I'm not in Michigan. The ceiling is not my home. <laughs> this, is, this is the University Hotel uh, of, uh, in Prague, Charles University in Prague. I am in, in Prague right now. It's six o'clock or 6.10 in the evening. <clears throat> so, now, I thought uh, about dividing this in three parts, uh, not quite in the same way as it is in the abstract. I would like to start with the Golem story and then go to the RUR story and then go to the system story. So, and the overall argument kind of um, overarching everything is the question uh, whether were uh, Karol Chopek and his brother Josef. They were very influential. They were very important authors. And uh, Josef was, uh, was an artist, actually, also an important modernist art, artist, artist. So the, the overarching question is where, how, how come that they started this RUR story? How come that they, where did it come from? And one uh, part of the talk would be uh, a reference or comparison with a film about the Gola. And the reason, uh, I'll talk about this a little bit, but uh, the reason being that the Gola is named, the film is 1920 and the, the RUR is 1921 technically January 1921. So it's kind of side by side there. So do we have any cross connections or whatever? We can discuss that. Overall, however, this is, uh, you know, this would be a, a large, large story about uh, what was happening at the beginning of the 20th century. There was definitely an enormous interest or enormous, let's say, uh, visible significant in interest, especially in the arts, in, in the status of technology. And uh, we have uh, all sorts of um, theater performances with mechanical artists, uh, uh, actors. We have, um, in, if, if you uh, remember the Italian futurism, we have an enormous interest in in the interaction of man and machine. The futurists like to drive around, fly around, and they talk about these airplanes and, uh, and, and automobiles and maybe the possibility that, that, that men, and it's very masculine, it's men, males basically, but in general we can say men, whether they perhaps merge with machines or whether machines merge with men or something like that, whether things like that. So um, there was a general kind of background, let's put it that way. And that doesn't mean that you can always derive things straightforwardly from the general background, actually. Mostly there are many, too many interesting details that, that, that kind of caution you a little bit. So let me uh, let let's uh, and I, I I'm I don't know terribly much about your uh, background or motivation or kind of conceptualization of all your uh, stagings, but maybe you have uh, 
discuss that and maybe you know more about this this background at least in historical terms uh, so but we can discuss that the golem let's let's start with section one so the golem and it, it's a character from jewish folklore there is a, a east european uh, jewish oral folklore legends mostly and in one of these legends, way back, way back, like 16th century, uh, there emerges a, a, a rabbi in, in, in Eastern Poland who, is, who, who, who created a golem. And golem is an artificial android, that's very important, android being. And it's not a human being, it's, it is, um, it's, it's understood that the golem and whoever did did it also, uh, the golems were created probably for some auxiliary purposes like servants or there is not much detail on, on this. But the rabbis being close to God, they had somehow this privilege of, uh, of creating golems, but not human beings. And um, uh, the, there was a problem in one of the versions of the, of the golem legend from Poland. It seems that the golem is growing too big, becoming too independent, and eventually the rabbi had to, has to dis, disable him, uh, de, 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 deactivate him. And the, the old story says in one version, as he was deactivating him, uh, the golem fell on him and scarred his face. And the other, in the other story is uh, that he, mm, that the golem fell on the rabbi and killed him. So that's the uh, that's the uh, beginning of the of the story. And already at this beginning, you can see that these artificially created um, characters, creatures, there, there is something unstable in them, something dangerous, and they start living on their own uh, and um, get out of control, basically. Uh, so the legend migrated as it, as it was usual and, and made it to Prague, uh, which is a way, especially in those days, it was not just a, Simple neighborhood, and um, the uh, and became associated with a, a local rabbi, Rabbi Betzler Ben Leuf here in Prague, who lived really a real person around 1600. So in the 19th century, there was an enormous kind of interest in 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 legends, in showing that communities have histories and. <coughs> this type of thinking. And the legend from these two, three lines from the old days grew into an enormous uh, uh, narrative. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was stretched and stretched and stretched and uh, things were added and added. But the basic idea is the same, that, that, uh, that there is uh, this artificial creation artificial being made man-made looks like android it's it, it is it is not a computer it's not a box that kind of is somewhere on a shelf it, it moves around it looks like a person and um, um, that's the that's the golem uh, in 1920 and now we are getting close to Chaplin in 1920, uh, German, two German filmmakers, uh, Paul Wegener and Karl Böse, produced and uh, released a film 
um, whose main hero is or main protagonist is, is the golem. It's called uh, the golem and how he came into this world. So this is pretty close to Chopek. Uh, Chopek uh, was writing the play in 1920 late and uh, the first it premiered, I think, in January 1921. So it's a close kind of. So we can. Uh, um, so what what was the Golan film about? Uh, how was it stretched? And well, the Golan film was about uh, Rabbi Lev. Uh, Rabbi Lev is, uh, and then, then these are the beginning kind of. Uh, uh, ways of, of extending the story. The, the rabbi creates the golem in kind of based on a premonition that it could be a useful uh, device in case that Jews would be expelled from Prague, in case that there is a disaster, basically. And indeed, it, that's much of the film is about this. Uh, the the rabbi shows the golem to the emperor. Uh, the golem actually saves the emperor's life in a, in a specific situation there, and so the emperor is um, is recalls the 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 expulsion uh, uh, decree. So so the golem in this story saved Prague Jews from being. Uh, 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 out from Prague. Now, the interesting thing is, so this is nowhere in the old stories uh, versions. This is a kind of nice addition to the whole, it narrativizes the film. And what is interesting during the, the, the film, the golem, and that's a very interesting, that really connects with Chopek. The golem, so he does not talk. He is very clumsy. He does not, his appearance is really repulsive, actually. It's a clay figurine. Uh, but he acquires human traits. And the main trait that he's acquiring is emotions. And the main emotion that he is acquiring is love. He falls in love with the rabbi's daughter. So this is a total invention, absolutely no mention of rabbi's daughter in older uh, versions of the story, but fine, you need it in the film. You, know, you add some romance and stretch, stretch it from 60 minutes to 90 minutes. And that's good. So that's what you need. So <clears throat> the, so, we can treat it the two, uh, several ways. We can uh, look at the at the film in this context, uh, created man-made uh, device, kind of really machine or something like that. So this would go with this whole industrial, technological, et cetera, et cetera, development, or uh, it's actually not exclusive. Uh, uh, we can add another level and say, the film is not only about technology that gets out of control. I, I should have said right away that the, the story ends badly in at some point the golem is uh, starts raging and the, uh, the, the I should have said that right away. Uh, he, the, 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 this love story is, an, uh, is a tragic love story, et cetera, et cetera. So the golem gets, uh, acquires human traits, emotions, but actually he is, uh, he becomes dangerous and gets out of control. So uh, we could leave it at this and say, well, this here, here you have technology that gets out of control, basically to translate it in, into some modern um, uh, concepts. But at the same time, we could think about this story as a story about uh, attributes of human nature. What, what, what does it take to make a man out of, or oh, what's the right thing back? What does it take to make, uh, to turn 
the golem into a human being. Okay, so that's we could say that's a big philosophical question, and the, the answer is emotions, love, and things like like that and might go on if if, if we want. So uh, the that's the that's the golem story. Uh, I hope I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm kind of cutting it short a little bit. But the film was very successful. It's a classic of the so-called German expressionist film, and there are studies about that. And some people focused, for instance, on the on the on the character of the rabbi. What he is depicted actually as a as a sorcerer in a way. And the way he creates the golem is he, he and that's interesting, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't appeal to God. He appeals to dark powers, to dark powers, uh, uh, um, black magic. So that's an interesting saying that these new inventions, yes, you can you know, make a headway, but you have to appeal to, to spirits, black magic, and things like that. So there is already this, this line of, of danger, instability, irrationality, and that's already there. So the film was a big success. And, uh, it, and there's practically, uh, it's hard to think that Chapek would not, uh, Karel Chapek would not see that. So uh, we are in 1920. He's rating uh, this, this RUR. It premieres January 1921, so probably shortly after the Golem film. And um, what is it about? <laughs> so you probably uh, uh, know it better than I do because you, 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 you must have uh, studied it for the, for the, um, for the staging, for, the, for your uh, adaptation. So, uh, the film, the, the story, you know it very well, but let's, let's uh, state a few uh, minor points, or a few, few kind of turning points there. And uh, that is that the, the, the whole history of, of how, how Golan, uh, sorry, how the robots uh, were, uh, created. And remember at the beginning, there is this history, he, he, uh, this guy Domin, who, who is the boss of this factory, a robot factory, he gives this Helena a, a short kind of lecture. And there are three stages. There was an old Rotham and he was a scientist who wanted to simply uh, buy, uh, play God bypass laws of nature and make everything clearer, simpler, develop this formula. Uh, and he was, as a scientist, was not very successful. Uh, that is, he's created the formula, but that was it. His successor is there, the young uh, uh, Rossum, and he is an engineer. And that's a very important thing. There is a difference between scientists and engineers. The engineers don't really care about principles. They, at least in that conception, they, they so the the uh, the engineer took out everything human-like out of the robot, everything that was not useful. So there is a utilitarian kind of approach. So this and that was robots were meant to be workers, to be uh, basically walking machines. And for that, you don't need a, you know, you don't need a many human attributes that you just need. And then there is this domain, there is the third stage and he has a factory and that produces them as, as, as robots. Now, there is this interesting moment, and I, I never figured that out actually, that these, uh, the, these robots, and, and he's producing them like, it's a mass production, it's a conveyor belt production. They have the formula, they have the, everything they need, so they 
just uh, produce them by, by thousands and thousands and sell them by thousands and thousands. So uh, the, there is somewhere a point when these robots start acquiring human features, human traits. And uh, that's very similar to the Golem story. This, there is the same process. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the golem becomes human, acquires emotions, develops emotions, and uh, this, it's basically the same in the RUR story. The robots start acquiring human attributes, and. The story here is much richer than the Golem story because the, uh, the, mm, they acquire emotions. They, at the end, can fall in love with one another. Uh, but uh, you may remember this episode with, what is this name? Robot, robot, I, Radius, I think. Robot radius acquires another pro human property: aggression, aggressivity. He wants to rule. He he becomes violent, uh, and uh, and so the acquisition of human attributes is much kind of uh, broader uh, than in 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 the Golem story. Well, at any rate, I don't know how you handle that or in your staging, but. At the end, the robots, or shortly before the end, the robots revolt and kill the mankind. And they do it with the intention of, um, of uh, being, um, being superior, being, and that's another human intent kind of property you might argue for. Uh, they want to, uh, they, they are a new superior race. The mankind is no longer kind of useful and they will run the show themselves. The only problem is that they don't reproduce. And they don't have the formula. The formula was, that's an interesting episode. Tell me then later how you handled it. The formula was burnt and destroyed. And so <laughs> it turns out that Cradle has a shelf life of, I don't know, 20 years or something like that, and then the robots start. There are no people around, but the robots also disappear. Uh, then the Chopek solved this problem also in this way that robots would, uh, would, would um, um, acquire human features, and that then eventually they would fall in love with one another, that there would be a distinction in gender. He, he doesn't say how that proceeds, but, uh, and, and the robots uh, have, uh, um, at the end, they, uh, they start uh, multiplying, they start reproducing. And so th there is a happy end. There is a kind of a cycle. One mankind goes away, and the next mankind steps in, so to so to speak. Uh, this technological invention got out of control. It revolted. It killed mankind. But Chopek was uh, Chopek uh, ended with, on a on a on a on a positive note. So these are just some few uh, uh, clear uh, uh, points in the in the in the play. Now, the question is, was this? So, what is the connection between the golem and and the, the robot? Well, obviously, there are some dis clearly descriptive. Uh, I mean clear uh, moments. Uh, one is the golem is one person, unique or, or a person, entity. And uh, uh, the robots are millions by the end. And there is a, uh, there is a kind of illusion. Remember, we are in 1921. New world is beginning, the world one 
ended. There was a Bolshevik revolution, 1917, in, 19, in October 1917. Uh, there was a lot of political issues, a lot of social conflicts and, and so on. And so uh, in this, at this moment, uh, there is a strong kind of connotation the, between the working class and the robots. And the robots, uh, so the, 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 the staging was a sensation. It, it immediately made it to, uh, to Berlin, to Paris, to London, to New York. So in the years uh, 22, 3, 4, 5, there were stagings at everywhere. And, and, the, and Chapek became a famous author by, by that point. Uh, but in all stagings, there were robots and there were groups of robots and they were always uh, depicted as basically uniform, not really as slaves because in, in the ancient sense, like being chained or uh, here, there is a more uh, a different image and that's an image of a, of a work mass or something like that. They are all, they very often appear in these uh, stagings uh, in uniforms, in uh, uniform uniforms, meaning everyone's the same, except that they have different numbers, for instance. So it was typical that on the chest or on the hat, they had a number or something like that. So there is um, this, this uh, so there are several lines in this story, in this uh, story, one is, I would say these attributes of human nature, how do you get from a robot to a human being? Um, and um, technology getting out of control in some sense, that's the same thing as in the Golem. And then there is this um, kind of uh, allusion to, to, to working class, to, uh, to this, entity, this, this, um, in, how should I say that, uh, to this mass of, of workers who do all, who are totally uh, uh, oppressed and do all the same <clears throat> and have no special kind of rights. Now, so we can, <clears throat> we can go in, in many ways from this, but this is definitely not in the golem. So the golem is one single man of entity. Now, let's go to stage three. Um, a little bit chronology reversal. Uh, when did this or when did all these motifs in RUR come up? Uh, or how did they, how did uh, Chapek, Karol Chapek, Put them together, or how he created the play, and we—that's kind of a, naively, of course. You always want to know that, but here we are in a kind of a very interesting situation uh, because this was not written out of scratch. The uh, Caro, together with his brother Joseph, wrote a uh, wrote a. Uh, wrote a short story in 1908. So we are going well before World War I, uh, called System, of the system. I'm not sure what the article should be there. And it's a strange, satirical, bizarre story. Um, I don't know whether you had a chance to look at it, or I, I don't think it's translated. Uh, and the story is this. The two, there are two guys, obviously the, he co-authored it with uh, Joseph, so it's obviously the voices of the two. There are two guys right. who, are, who are thrown off a boat through some misbehavior. And then there is another guy who is kind of sorry for them and he is thrown off the, off, off the deck as well. So there are three men uh, floating with these safety belts um, in uh, in the sea, slowly kind of drifting towards the towards the uh, coast, 
And the man is an entrepreneur. And they start talking about various things and in one of them is the worker problem. And the two guys said, oh, that's a terrible problem. The 19th century created these workers and the industrial and you know, all these things and they saw up. And the guy says, ah, yeah, well, all right, but I managed that. I have a system. I overcame the, I solved the worker problem. And he tells them what the solution is. And it is, it's a bizarre story because they are kind of waves are coming and, and moving them towards the, but they have this conversation. And they, and he says, you know, I have a big factory, 22,000 workers. And we select them in a very special way. We select only those who don't think. We have special tests in order to make sure that they are not interested in poetry, that they are not interested in anything uh, philosophical, political, or anything like that. And we have tests for that. And when they, uh, when they pass the test, they are hired. So the, here, I, I think one can argue <clears throat> relatively plausibly that uh, the robots are not man-made, but man-selected, so to speak. So that there is a way of selecting from the population something like robots. And he says, it works perfectly well. Uh, there is, um, there is um, um, the factory works very well and the, the worker problem has been solved. I have. I am the only head in a factory with twenty-two thousand arms or something like that. Now he then, however, admits that uh, the best workers, and and this is a bizarre kind of story, that the best workers are awarded with access to women. And uh, however, this so-called access to women for, for um, as an award uh, has there are strict rules. And um, the, the, the encounters have to happen under total darkness. Nobody has to see anything, is allowed to see anything at night, uh, darkness, and so on. And in one case, it unfortunately happens that the, uh, that the worker who is awarded with uh, access to a woman is that, the, that, that light is not turned off. And he is inspired by uh, the beauty of the woman. In the, there are never words like prostitute or kind of how is it? The details are not there. Uh, uh, he is um, he's impressed, and he starts to develop uh, exactly it's the same story as as before. Uh, feelings, human feelings, real human feelings. So he passed the test of being an imbecile, basically. But now he is interested. He becomes to be interested in poetry in uh, music, uh, this and that. And then other workers uh, uh, kind of cheat, start cheating and use light during these encounters. In the end, uh, there is a revolt. They all become, uh, they stop being these, this type of workers that pass the test. They start reading books. They start uh, uh, um, um, uh, all sorts of activities from choral societies to sport clubs and things like that. So everything, uh, so the, 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 the system actually breaks, breaks down. The system breaks down. And here you might, you know, have your ideas about whether it's the women that break the system or 
you know, this, this open. Uh, it, it's it's a somewhat absurd story, I, I, even stylistically. They are still uh, um, in in these waves, uh, uh, floating to, uh, drifting to the shore. At any rate, next day uh, they 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 land happily, and next day uh, the the. The, the two guys visit the Mr. Ripratton is, is his name. And he is totally devastated. He's reading them a letter he just received. Uh, there is a total revolt in my town. Everyone, uh, 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 everything broke down. This is a revolution. And uh, I'm no longer you know, in charge of anything. They killed my wife, they killed my children. There is a revolt. So that's the end of the story. They tell him, oh, well, all right, so too bad. Uh, but maybe the, the first uh, worker uh, 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 whose light was forgotten to be turned off, uh, they, they call him the new Adam, the new Adam. And that's the end of R U R. So uh, if if you uh, if you are interested in kind of um, comparative analysis in comparing these two texts, you will uh, you will get a lot of material. And in some sense, one could say that R U R was written already in 1908 by the two brothers. That the story was there. And that would tell you also that uh, the role of the golem story in this kind of causal terms, like influencing or is, 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 is negligible, is not there. Topic later at the end uh, uh, in the 30s said, oh yes, go, the golem. The golem is an individualized uh, robot or something like that. He commented on, on, on this. So, uh, but um, it, there is no reason to think that he kind of went to the movie theater in uh, 1920 and then wrote RURs under the impression of the goal. There, there is a huge difference. There is this system story and uh, the system story is basically RUR in many, many, many ways. So that's my comments. That's uh, here. I would uh, be happy to answer questions, discuss whatever you want. So um, thank you very much for that uh, lovely talk. Um, my question is kind of simple, and I probably should know the answer to it. But was Chopic Jewish? No. <laughs> no, no. The the story, the Golem story, was of course a Jewish story, and it was presented uh, uh, as, as 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 part of the legacy of the, especially of the Prague ghetto. But uh, you know, I think there was pretty clearly, pretty early on, it was clear that it can be read on a universal level. That it can that it's not just a Jewish story. That it's that these basic motifs like technology getting out of control, attributes of human nature. How do you make these? That, that they had a, 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 a they have a very communicable quality. You, you don't uh, you know there were these advertisements in New York uh, like forty years ago. You don't have to be Jewish in order to uh, to eat uh, Jewish rye bread. <laughs> so, so this is um, you don't have to be Jewish in order to understand the Golan. I have a question that I've been uh, wondering for uh, when um, a Czech audience heard the word robot. Yeah, that, that has meaning in the in the Czech language, and I'm, I'm I've always been curious what associations would, uh, you know, a, a Czech audience mm -hmm. have yeah. With, yeah. That, with that word. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a very important question because uh, the play, you know, is, do we know where it takes place? Do we know, are, are these characters, are they Czechs? Are they, is, is, when is it happening and so on? So it is actually one of the first international plays, I am using this expression for, for, for short of a better expression, for, for, for lack of a better expression. Uh, so it was one of the first Czech plays that could not actually be easily uh, identified as a Czech play. <laughs> why, 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 why is it a Czech play? It's not about Czech history. There are not Czech peasants running in the fields there or anything like that. Uh, people have modern um, attires and so on. But there are two points there that reveal uh, that kind of hidden traces. One of them is uh, um, um, robot, the word robot. And this, uh, the, the root of this word is a Slavic root. And in Russian, you may perhaps you know this uh, mean uh, rob, rob means is, is for instance in the word rabota, which means work simply work. And in Czech, there is a semantic shift. Uh, a robota is a surf labor. This is the, uh, the, uh, the forced labor that, uh, that the, uh, let's say, serfs in the 17th, 18th century were supposed to uh, provide for, his, for their lords. So uh, it is, um, uh, it's a neg it, 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 it means uh, hard work, uh, toiling, uh, uh, forced work, uh, basically slave work or something like that. So the, the but uh, that's uh, robota and robot was a neologism. And it is usually said that, and Karol Čapek said that himself, that it was invented by his brother Jonga. Who's, who was a co-author of the system and was, they were very close, close kind of. So that's one thing. And then there is this Rossum. <laughs> and this Rossum is maybe less transparent uh, or, or clear, but um, the Czech, there is a Czech word, Rosum, with a Z, with a Z. And that means ratio. Uh, um, um, rational thinking. Uh, and indeed, the old Rossum was a scientist. He was, uh, he was, he invented the formula. He had scientific ideas and, and so on. So th there are two Czech words <laughs> uh, uh, in, in the whole play that are kind of traces of, of the, uh, uh, and um, uh, the Czech audiences, of course, could read that. That's that's obvious. Um, hopefully, this won't show how naive I am, but um, I always look for the moral in these stories. And you know, I remember the Golem story as a kid of being, you know, man shouldn't do what God does, and that terrible things happen. Um, but that could be wrong. That just might be my Sunday school version of it. Um, but with this one, is this kind of a, a story where? The same story of the golem, you know, man tried to do what God should do and they're going to be punished? Or is this just a story of like when we, if humans are just evil and violent and yeah. they've created something that's better than them and so they're going to die? You know, I guess, I guess I don't know. I'm always looking for that moral. I don't know what it is. This is a weird play. The play is about, obviously, about a conflict and a resolution of the conflict. And uh, Chapek, yeah, I think that's why I would stress this, this worker problem there. Chapek uh, has some kind of, uh, there is, uh, the background is, is some, uh, uh, is a revolt, some kind of social revolt. But Chapek uh, uh, solves it, and this was a criticism that was launched already in his days. He uh, he was regarded as a kind of idealist. The problem, this conflict, is solved by love, 
uh, by uh, um, uh, he, the statement, the final statement is a very pathetic statement, and it says uh, simply, it, it, it says, in other words, humanity will not die out. Human various forms of humanity may kind of morph into one another, but, and there will be changes, and the robots will take over, yes, but they take over as human beings. They don't take over as uh, as machines in that sense. They they are basically like people, and uh, so um, you know I think that this is one of the morals of the story that kind of humanity is indestructible in some sense. You may argue, well, maybe maybe we wish that were true or, or maybe it's a naive uh, almost childish idea or whatever but i think that this that is this uh, it, it this story uh, this the the plot of the story in rur does not end with a tragedy whether the end is motivated whether it's a motivated uh, really ending Mm, and some kind of well, there is some real test or, or, or check. I, I, I cannot tell you, but the 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 sto the, the the plot ends positively. There is a, there is a simply a new mankind. So I don't know how to stage that uh, uh, to make it convincing, or not to make it uh, really a kind of. That you scratch your hair and says, "Oh, really? How?" <laughs> so I knew Adam. Well, nice, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's that might be a problem, I think, for for these for the for the uh, for the stage. Uh, but I think I would say this is the uh, the the golem story is much simpler and shorter, and uh, it ends up. You know, the, in the film, it's also stretched into a positive end. Actually, I, I have you watched the film uh, as a kind of background. Do that. It's all on. Uh, it's all on YouTube. There are several versions. They are more or less the same, uh, time-wise, like uh, one hour, twenty minutes, or something like that. Uh, small differences, very small versions, edited, colored, and, and so on. But um, it would be, a, it might be maybe too late, but it might have been a good background for the, for the, for the thinking about the, uh, the, the play. It's, um, and it's fun to watch. It's, it's this kind of silent movie, uh, expressive. Uh, uh, we we actually have the director of the pr uh, production of uh, uh -huh. right here uh, with us. So uh, Christopher, you want, you want to? Uh, see, see, see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I would love to hear something about the production. I know, for instance, that many years ago, maybe twenty years ago, students at uh, uh, USC, uh, California, uh, staged this play. And uh, there was, of course, an enormous interest in robots. So they they had uh, all sorts of uh, weird uh, kind of devices walking around <laughs> and so on. So they, they, that's one, I think, uh, I can imagine the attraction on, on that line. Yeah. Uh, so we worked with Lee Shackelford, who uh, adapted it for an off-Broadway production in, I think, 2013. Um, and the production we did is uh, one that he adapted during COVID for uh, as a radio drama. We're doing a live produced radio drama. Uh -huh. I think in terms of some of the things we've been talking about here, that the idealism of the ending is, is uh, interesting um, and sort of it's... Um, is so sort of religiously founded in the Adam and Eve and, and all of that. But it's one of the things that I think I find really interesting and that we've really highlighted through this adaptation is that interplay between love, rationalism, um, uh, idealism, 
you know, you said it ends with this idealism, but it also sort of starts with idealism. You know, this idea, I'm going to make the perfect worker and there's not going to be any problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a very important uh, thing there that uh, the, the third guy, the domain in, in this uh, uh, line of generations, that he is, a, he, he is not a pure kind of... Uh, uh, this this is not meant as pure capitalism. This is meant as uh, as uh, I think that actually the 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 the, the inspiring uh, person might have been Henry Ford, you know, inventing something for the community and of course selling. But uh, so there is there is a vision, you know. Yeah, and I think there's there's a bunch of different sort of visions because you have engineers represented, you have scientists represented, you have the businessman represented, and you have a couple of female characters that in the original are not really well <laughs> portrayed. Mm -hmm. And we've changed quite a lot having to do with the female characters, particularly his wife, Helena, and giving her much more agency and intelligence. But it does seem that, that a lot of what's going on there is um, uh, that, I mean, the idealism and then not having to be within an environment in which it requires all of these disparate experts in different areas to actually do and accomplish something, which is in total contrast to the robots, um, where, and this idea of what is labor that we've been talking about here a lot. Um, and then also sort of the needing to um, root that idealism, maybe question it, you know, and and reevaluate and revise and adjust mm -hmm. to um, new circumstances and an mm -hmm. inability to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so sort of idealism taking us places, but then mm -hmm. not being able to shift direction mm -hmm. and it's too late, and not being able mm -hmm. to really work with, receive the expertise from every team member when you need to receive it or adapt to what's mm -hmm. Um, shared with you that may not fit the the direction you're on, mm -hmm. um, changing direction in some way, and then that change becoming violent because you couldn't do it, <laughs> and it was mm -hmm. just gushy. yeah, that's interesting. I I would only kind of um, I'm I'm thinking about this re religious the, the religious interpretation of the ending. I don't think it's religious. They were not, the, the two brothers, A, were not religious in the first place, but uh, that's not so important. I think that they are using simply a general, kind of generalized cultural imagery, a new man, so a new Adam or some, something like that. It, it does not, mm, mm, I don't read it on a, it, it, it's a, it was a shared, Kind of vocabulary. It was everyone knew who how the mankind began, at least in according to that myth. And uh, I think uh, he is using this. This he's kind of recycling that myth without and 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 its language without meaning anything super religious or something like that or yeah. Christian or Jewish or whatever. So, uh, and the, what you touch upon uh, uh, labor, I think it's interesting because um, I think that they, if you think about the plot and development and uh, this whole idea of, of the, of this guy Domain, the, 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 his main idea is, uh, is uh, that, Everyone that, uh, that people would stop working, that work would disappear, because it would be taken uh, uh, care of by uh, by robots. And I think that one could argue that this was one of the uh, of the uh, beginnings of the disaster, uh, and that this idea. This uh, uh, that the play actually shows that one of the human attributes is work. That people cannot be deprived of that attribute, and they and the hero 
the remaining hero, the remaining protagonist of the play is this guy Alquist. And why do robots like him? Well, he works with his hands. He is an architect or builder or constructor or something like or bricklayer. And he works with his hands. And they, they I think they like that. Uh, that's why they save him. He is the only one who is saved. Uh, although he is incompetent uh, in terms of like chemistry and things like that. So I think that there is, um, and th that I would say, in the golem story, you don't find that. The golem story is too simple. But here you find a number of kind of, if, if you want to write up a checklist of human attributes of human nature or something like that. So you would probably add labor that people want to work, want to have creative work. Uh, like he is a, a artist, he's a creative man and so on. Well, and even so, if we look at Doman, his uh, the main value that he sees in his life and his heritage and what he's done is his work. You know that that's core to. That's true. Uh, although although he is wrong, uh, but that's true. He is. Uh, I think therefore that would be interesting to. I don't know how others interpreted that, uh, but I think that they m m m might have been inspired by these entrepreneurs of the kind of, that there were a few uh, of the kind of uh, Henry Ford or uh, kind of who at the same time thought of themselves as saviors of the world, but uh, still uh, they, there was a vision. Yeah.